Hi. Hi, mic working? Ooh, nice. Uh, hi, hello. Uh, my name is Pau, and I'm going to talk with this talk called Lights Home PC Action, which is about essentially how to make the most out of cycles and how I use cycles in my personal projects and how personal projects in cycles ended up landing, amongst others, an, a, a, a job, which is cool. Um, so that's me. Hi, I am Pau. I'm 23. I'm from Barcelona. And as you can tell from my humble uh, background as an amateur 2D artist, uh, I am an artist. Uh, and and I really like art. Never thought I could do a career on that. But then I did a donut. And my life changed because I immediately fell in love with 3D. And I decided to study that and pursue that career. And now I have a job at Disney, which is cool. Uh, so yeah, today I'm going to tell a story that, uh, again, starts with a donut. Um, I started learning 3D, loved it, uh, and I just wanted to do everything. And I did tons of projects. I did a plant, tried, uh, this is a video, it should be playing elevator music. <laughs> Second one in a row. Nice. So there's tons of them. Perhaps some of them we can skip. That's unfortunate. Um, well, basically, that's a real. Uh, I did a plant. I tried VFX. That's me as a teenager. I tried sculpting. Uh, I did a short film about a cookie with suicidal thoughts. Another plant. Uh, fell in love with puppets. Tried to do a short film with them, but failed. I did another plant because I'm obsessed. Uh, generally, I did I did lots of lots of things. Uh, it's not going to the next slide. Damn it. Um. <laughs> so yeah, basically, uh, I was a generalist. And I loved doing projects uh, for fun, a project that, that seemed meaningless, uh, and I decided to study 3D animation, which I did. And when I went to school, I found that everything was based around fitting on a pipeline, about doing every speciality in every software that's industry standard for that task, which bugged me a bit. Uh, I decided to just keep doing, uh, I mean, doing uni stuff, of course, Maya and Arnold and everything, but uh, doing uh, projects uh, by the side in Blender. But there comes a point in every artist's life when somebody, perhaps a friend, family member, uh, comes to you and they say, like, uh, you know, your, your your art is really cool, but what? What what job are are, are you gonna do? Uh, <laughs> to which I respond, of course, uh, it feels amazing. To uh, can you have a job as an artist? And it turns out you can. Uh, and uh, I thought my best chances would be to, I loved the, the aspect of crafting images and guiding people through color and visual language. So I decided I would be a lighting artist in animation. But what do lighting artists do? Essentially we do pretty renders. And rendering for those amongst you who don't know uh, is the process where, you know, 3D animation lives in a 3D scene and Lighting artists place 3D lights that cast 3D light rays. Within that, that go to a virtual 3D camera that produces an image. Actually, it's the other way around. It's technical, it's boring unless you're here. Uh, <laughs> but actually, there's the part of making them 3D. Uh, there's, for example, this is a scene with same models, same poses, uh, same texture, same everything, but one could argue one is prettier than the other, or at least they evoke different things. And that's another conversation, which is color, perspective, contrast. And in ge that, that really, really appealed to me. Uh, I was an artist, after all. And sorry for keeping it basic. It's just that family and friends are watching. And I think it's you know, my chance to explain what is th that thing that I do for a living. Uh, so yeah, uh, that was great. Uh, it felt amazing. I was doing what I loved. You can do a job. Uh, uh, it's great. But then there can problems. That's that's a, a shot uh, which I lit for a school project done in every 
industrial standards software for every speciality. Um, that took in our schools, basically Maya and Arnold pipeline, an hour and a half to render. And that could be fine if you didn't take into account that this was a shot of 80 frames, uh, which is roughly three seconds by frame six, you reached a full-time day of job, which doesn't sound fair. We could only afford that because we had a render farm, which is lots of computers rendering in parallel. But that doesn't sound fair. Do you need an infrastructure to, uh, to access a job that allows you to work on an infrastructure? That doesn't seem fair. There has to be another way around. I was angry because mm, I wanted to render my stuff on my computer. I wanted to do something that appeals to me. And I was angry. There has to be another way to get a job as a lighting artist. And by that time, a friend of mine, an animator, his name is Bell, he's very talented. He uh, came to me with an animation. He said, I want it to look beautiful. Can you do that? Can, can it be done? And I was like, yes, it can be done. I can do it. I will. Uh, I don't know how, but I will. And then he so showed me the animation he had. That's another video that should be playing. And it should be playing without audio. That's because it's copyrighted. We don't, we don't, we don't want any issues to the channel. Um, uh, as you can tell by the lack of props, by making it beautiful, he didn't only mean doing lights, but he meant shaders and objects and virtually everything. So that's the animation. It's really cool, but my first reaction was fear. <laughs> I mean, it's 340 frames. Uh, it's moving cameras, no shortcuts possible. So I don't know, I would need tremendous infrastructure, a render engine that's extremely beautiful, yet very fast, that lives within a software where I can do shaders, objects, um, every kind of arrangement possible. Where would I find that? Uh, of course, we, I wouldn't be here. Uh, and, and first reaction was amazing. Cycles, extremely fast with the GPU and everything. Great, felt the interactivity in it, the denoiser. I could go faster, that means more creative iterations, which means a prettier result. But it went shortly followed by frustration because I came from Arnold and Arnold has lots of mm, finicky features where you can tweak every aspect of a light. And I don't know if you can tell by now, but I'm a nerd also. Uh, and, and these things I love. So these are thing, five topics which I thought were impossible in cycles. And I found workarounds or solutions for which I want to spread around. So problem number one, textures in lights. Uh, most of you know that in cycles, you can put textures in spotlights so that they behave kind of like projectors. Uh, but most people don't know, and how would you approach this, where the texture is in the light and it shows up in specular reflections? So it turns out you can. As for another video, which I will talk over <laughs> while they, they look, that was possible with workarounds before, but now it's, there's an elegant solution in uh, 4.0, where essentially there's this button where you can use notes for lights, which I love. This perhaps is going to be slow. I am OK. Um, so yeah, there's, there's an area light. It's flat. It's a boring reflection. And then you can plug in a texture coordinate. So you get UV coordinates. And from that, you can, of course, UV coordinates. Exactly. Uh, there's, uh, you can put an image texture. I have, in this case, uh, an image of some window. Uh, just around casually. And now you can have a nice reflection. I'm compensating a bit for the exposure here. And yep, it works. So yeah, that's something I discovered and I wanted to share. Nice. Uh, problem number two, uh, another trying to go a bit fast. And yeah, uh, you, you could think that that's useless, but 
I use it all the time on eyes because eyes are like big shiny balls in animated characters. And that's where you can fake and design how the eyes look. Here I'm, I'm faking a, a torch where there is none. So problem number two, light decays. So I'm going to run you through an example of a short I'm doing with another talented animator. His name is Fran. Um, this is uh, also a, a video that should be playing. I, I'm, I'm going to skip that, actually. Can we skip the video? Yeah, why not? It's a, it's a shot uh, that uh, essentially is a camera traveling uh, and following these two characters. And I painted some art. I wanted to make these characters go into an eerie kind of go deeper into a temple. And I wanted to evoke with a light that they're going from a safe place to a tenebrous place. Um, and so I start. I start by lighting. That's, that's very rough. That's general brush strokes. Uh, but I'm blocking in the key light, which comes from screen left. And I generally liked it. And then I flip to the end of the shot. And now it doesn't work because this light coming from screen left now is bleeding too much in screen right. So I'm getting too much light on screen right. I need to make light decay faster so that it gets darker faster. Ta-da! That's, that's my favorite note. I place it in a, in a single slide because I love it. Uh, you, you can have all the info about light rays, everything that, that Cycles does to access it in the light shader. We have the ray length, and if we use it in a video, um, you can use it to drive anything. Here I'm in this video, which we should be... Oh, yeah, we're seeing. No, we're not. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Here. Um, so, yeah. Essentially, what you can do is to uh, use this information to create masks to show where the light should be affecting and where it shouldn't. Essentially, it gives me a value of how long the ray has traveled in Blender units when hitting a surface. So you can do mass with that, and you can see as I slide this number, the light starts to reveal from the light source into the back of the scene, which is, I didn't know that was possible. Uh, and there's another video with we, we can skip. It's easy to imagine how you can turn that into a tool where you can do gradients and have it be a, a bit more user friendly. But using this technique, uh, which can we go to the next um, slide? Thank you. And sorry. Uh, here. Um, that's, yeah. That was before, and that is after. So see how not only it gets generally darker, but in screen left, it doesn't get that much darker. It's just getting darker on screen right. That's the kind of finicky things we, we, we nerds love. Uh, so yeah, and that gets me, again, closer to the art. So that's great. Problem number three, tweaking individual light components. I'm going to run through this one because it's um, really nerdy. But um, that's a light, and Blender internally splits it into diffuse rays, which are the ones that uh, reflect like in a matte manner, the shiny ones. Uh, the ones that has gone have gone through glass or a material of that sort, and the ones that have bounced more than once when hitting the camera, the indirect ones. And it turns out that, again, we can separate them, uh, which is cool, uh, between, I don't know, we have glossy, shadow, um, and uh, diffuse, transparent, transmission, all, all those kind of things. And I did a tool uh, which we could show in a video um, where essentially with sliders, which is something I missed from Arnold, you can uh -huh, elevator music again. You can essentially increase or decrease certain uh, components of a light for every indi individual light. So perhaps making a certain light bounce more on the indirect so it feels more room or perhaps making it more shiny. So perhaps you need less uh, less value overall to 
explain a shape. And those are very, very, very fine uh, tweaks, which I don't generally use, but it's cool to, for it to be possible because when you need it, you need it. Next, uh, so that's original and tweaked. You can see I'm introducing a bit more of, it's extremely subtle, a bit more of indirect. I don't know, let's go to the next one. Slow volumetrics. We, we <laughs> I think we, we all can relate to that. Volumetrics, for those who don't know, are these effects where light scatters through an atmosphere. And it's very important composition, compositionally, use, usually, because you can see we have a dark house here with a dark environment. And we are only separating the house from the environment because of a conveniently placed volumetric behind it. And we usually need volumetrics and, but the problem here is that Cycles perhaps does them too well, because unlike Arnold that uses a cheaper, um, less realistic approximation of, but that, that it works, of the volumetrics, Cycles really makes the light bounce around and it can hit hard on your render times. You may think I don't own a fog machine, to support the claim that Cycles is more realistic. You may also be wrong. Uh, so that's with no volumetrics. I'm adding a here a bit of volumetrics. You can see how the fire glows a bit more, how generally the, the background is more tight together, but that really hits on the, on the performance of the render. So that's what I do. And brace yourselves, all you, this is a video. Uh, sorry for making you work. Thanks for the work you do. Um, um, this is a video and brace yourselves, all, all you uh, nerds and purists of how things should look, because this is the, perhaps the dirtiest thing I will show today. I'm not getting undressed. Um, so it's, uh, uh -huh. so yeah, I'm putting a cube and I'm plugging an emission shader to a volume. That's something they did on Sprite Fright, which just gives you a shiny cube, which with a gradient texture, you can have a glowy thing there in 3D space, which does a trick for composition. And, and this is a comparison, back to the slides, thank you. This is a comparison for, that's with the scattering uh, technique, which is a realistic one, and that's with emissive volumes. And I'm not trying to perfectly match, but you can see you can get volumetric effects from either. This is, again, with emission. And I'm here a comparison because the render times aren't that different if you render all together. But if you create a layer that's called volumetric and you hide and, and you put everything on holdout but the volume, then the scatter it gives you a kind of noise that's very hard to clean or denoise. And the emission, eight samples, done. Two seconds. Uh, as fast as you're. As, as you're Computer takes. So that's cool. And some of you may say, but volumetric shadows, you're not talking. Well, you could, you could do that with shaders, but, uh, but yeah, generally in films that are not suspicious of having low budgets, when you're using volumetrics for composition, you don't generally need that much of a finessing. So it can be done. And uh, problem number five, and last one, I'm having a video here, blockers. There's no easy way. Like in, in Arnold, you can select uh, an area of your scene and make it darker or make it shine more, um, which in cycles we don't have. That That's supposed to be a video. I'm sorry. And here we don't have it, and I was once on a on a Blender Today chat, and it was like, Pablo, I know Pablo is a lighter. Pablo, how do you handle blockers in the studio? And he gave me the dirtiest solution, which I was very much not pleased. But I ended up using it, and it kind of is useful, and since in reality we don't really have the concept of blockers, it ends up feeling very natural. Are we seeing a video? There's no video. Okay, well, there's no video. Uh, <laughs> essentially, I, I place objects, hide them from everything but the shadow, uh, and, and just place them there and play with the opacity to, to just... There's an animation next. Ah, 
that makes sense. And this is a video. My God, I'm sorry. You came here for quality. <laughs> that's that's what you get. Amateur. Um. So, yeah, that's what I already explained. I mm, the the ball is has the same value than the background. We wanted to separate. If the ball were a character, that's the note that I would get. So I spawn a random plane. I give it a material that has some gradient on the opacity. And with a color ramp, I can, I can tweak the opacity. So to make it darker, I wanted to push it so that you don't notice it, but a before and after would reveal like a serious change. Like I'm getting better read. Which is which is cool. Uh, that's useful to have. Here's some example. Uh, back to the slides. Where I use it. And every time I have a sun or a directional light, I'm using some kind of blocker to shape it because this is looking very fat, flat. This is a bit of a nicer composition. Is that perfect? No, it isn't. I could always ask for more rendering features, but it gets the job done. And it did. And back to the example of the uh, animation that I was asked to light, I could finish it. So that's a video which I would like to play. Again, no audio, please. We would get in trouble. Just a heads up. Um, this was rendered entirely on my computer. I have a 3080 and I could render this at 4K in about seven minutes per frame. And that's it. So my, my, it's not perfect, but um, my point is it can be done by yourself uh, with your computer, uh, which is nuts. Uh, then uh, I was finishing my degree in animation by then, and I was putting my reel together, my demo reel together, which that was the main piece of it. And I wanted to spray around. I want people to, to, to see it. To, for them to hire me eventually. So I did a, a video on YouTube. I called it How I Rendered a Disney Style Animation uh, in Blender. Like Disney in Blender, clickbait. That's what YouTubers do, right? Um, and little did I know that uh, roughly a bit under a year after, after a series of unbelievable events and applying with that very same reel, I got a job at Disney. That's me working there. So I don't know, I, I, I myself, I've broken some of my uh, convictions that prof professional stuff has to be done with industry st standard software, which is something we all nerds here hate to hear. And I did that process myself, which I wanted to share. So thank you very much for coming. These are some, uh, some general uh, shout outs I wanted to do. Fran, who's looking for a job, and Bell, who are both animators that uh, whose works are featured here, and uh, this is the team that did my uh, the project for my university, and that's me. If you wanna stalk me anywhere else or find me in the conference, for YouTube channel, I respond everywhere. So that's it. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> See you around.